bipartisan vote in the Senate advanced legislation for the first time in three decades. I say to my colleagues, uh, while we, uh, it isn't everything we would have liked to see in legislation, it takes us down the road, the path to more safety, saving lives. Let us not judge the legislation for what it does not do, but respect it for what it does. And what it does is something that our inspiration in all of this in the House side, Representative Lucy McBath has said to us, we must get something done for the children. She herself speaks for herself, but also for so many other survivors. Our colleagues are gathered here with a pi pictures of those who have been lost to all of this, accompanied by family members of those who have been lost. It is our constant resolve that we will not stop until the job is done. Congressman Mike Thompson, the chair of the uh, Gun Violence Prevention Task Force, called us together here today. As it would be, he is speaking on the floor in favor of the legislature. Oh, he's here. Oh, <laughs> all right. It's my pleasure now, with gratitude, to yield to the distinguished chair of the task force. As soon as we're finished here, we'll vote on the bill, we'll send it to the president for his signature, with gratitude to President Biden for his great leadership on this subject for the children. Mr. Chairman, Mike Thompson. Madam Speaker, uh, thank you very much. It's a great honor for me to be here today with these outstanding colleagues. This was a team effort. Everybody worked extremely hard for one purpose and one purpose only, and that's to save lives. Every day, 30 people are killed by someone using a gun. And if you add suicides and accidental deaths, it jumps up to 100 people every day. And then we all know how terrible these mass shootings are. It's seemingly weekly that these happen. The tragic lives that are lost to these mass shootings and these individual shootings every day. We want to do something about it. The American people want us to do something about it. And today, we're going to pass legislation that saves lives. And we don't have to apologize or suggest that it doesn't do something that we wanted it to do. We're going to continue to work on this forever until our communities and our schools are safe. This bill is a good bill. It saves lives. It's legal. And it's got the votes to pass on this floor today. And it will go to the President of the United States for his signature. Thank you to all my colleagues. Thanks to everyone across the country who has worked tirelessly to make sure that we can come together to make our communities and our schools safer and that we can save lives. And now it's my great honor to introduce to you a colleague of ours that we have such tremendous respect for, someone who shows more courage than anybody I know, who's been able to take an issue and that is just tragic in anybody's life and turn it around and make it a very positive tool to make our communities safer and to save lives, Congresswoman Lucy McBath. Well, thank you, each and every one of you, for being here today. But I have to just give a deep sense of gratitude to my colleagues, to every one of my colleagues that has stood on the front lines with me and so many survivors and families and victims like me to work as hard as we possibly can to save as many lives as we can because you, America, you deserve that. As extremists on the Supreme Court have showed us, our success today will never be the end of this fight. But this is a beginning. Because each day that goes by, we learn the news that young children have been murdered, our loved ones have been murdered. Each day that goes by, parents are learning that they have to be forced to reckon with their deepest fears, a day in which one day their children may not come home. A day in which we understand, my colleagues and understand, that this fight must continue.
But for the first time in almost 30 years, for the first time since my son Jordan was born, this body has passed meaningful reforms, life-saving reforms, life-saving reforms for our existing gun laws. Legislation that will keep our families alive, that will keep our children alive. And that means something. That means something to this body. That means something for America. That means something for our children. This gives us hope. This gives America hope. This gives our communities the sorely needed hope that we have been crying out for for years and years and years. For all the pain that I know that I have suffered, my family and I, since the loss of, of our loved one, of Jordan, for all the pain and suffering for every family and every individual here that knows of someone who's lost a loved one to unnecessary gun violence, this is hope. Understand and know that this bill does not answer all of our prayers, but this is hope in moving forward to keep our communities safe from unnecessary gun violence. This is hope for our legacies, for the legacies of those that have been lost to this tragic gun culture. Because gun violence is the challenge of our lifetime. This truly is the issue of our era. And I know that my colleagues and I will never stop. And we will never give up. And we will succeed because you deserve to live in this country freely without the fear of unnecessary gun violence. And as God is my witness, I will never give up. And at this time, it is my honor to introduce to you a wonderful colleague, Robin Kelly from Illinois. Thank you, Speaker Pelosi. We are here today to pass what is but should not be once in a generation legislation. The Bipartisan Safer Communities Act is an opportunity to save lives, plain and simple. My constituents know the trauma of daily gun violence. Children are afraid to play in the parks. Commuters are scared to drive on the highway in and out of the city. I'm so proud that elements of my bill, the Prevent Gun Trafficking Act, are included in the legislation to crack down on the illegal gun trafficking and store purchasing that is bringing guns into communities across this country. I know just how pervasive and detrimental trafficking can be on a community. More than half of guns used in Chicago shootings are brought into the city by trafficking. Too many have died, even more injured, and an untold number traumatized. Today, we will pass this legislation in honor of the victims, the survivors, and all the loved ones who never gave up hope. Thank you. And with that, I introduce my colleague from California, Rep. Judy Chu. I'm Congressmember Judy Chu, Chair of the Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus, and I'm proud to stand here in support of the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act, which is heading to the President's desk today. The AAPI community is still reeling from the horrific Atlanta spa shootings from just one year ago, where a young man went to the store, bought a gun, and then just hours later went to an Asian spa in the Atlanta area to murder Asian women. And then with all deliberateness, he drove 27 miles away to two more Asian spas to kill more Asian women. In all, he killed eight people, including six Asian women. This senseless act of gun violence not only cost eight lives, but destroyed families and communities across Atlanta. They were daughters, mothers, grandmothers, and I will never forget the tears and sobs of their loved ones when we went down to Georgia to visit. So to see that again in Buffalo, in Uvalde, where families had their lives ripped apart in an instant is more heartache than our country can bear. The Bipartisan Safer Communities Act is such an important step forward. 
it will ensure deadly weapons are kept out of the hands of dangerous individuals through enhanced background checks for those under the age of 21. It will provide funds for red flag laws. It will close the boyfriend loophole. We know that there is more that we can do to end this epidemic of gun violence, but this bill will save lives. And we also will continue our fight. Thank you, and now I would like to present my wonderful colleague from Texas, Congress Member Veronica Escobar. Buenas tardes, soy Veronica Escobar y estoy aquí para apoyar esta legislación de parte de mi, las familias y mi gente en El Paso, Texas. Hello everyone, I am here in support, not just of this legislation, but also to express my deepest gratitude to our speaker, to our colleagues, and to everyone who has led the way to ensure that we are voting on progress today. I am also here to implore with our Senate leaders, especially in red states, red states that refuse to enact red flag laws, help us ensure that your vision is fully realized in states like Texas. I'm here to also thank the activists, the incredible activists without whom we would not be here today. The moms, the gun owners, the survivors, everyone who has been unrelenting, demanding change, telling us that these common sense laws would save lives. And who heeded your calls? House Democrats and Senate Democrats were equally unrelenting. I am so proud to be a member of a caucus that puts your lives, your livelihood, your safety, your security first. We will be there, we will continue to be there because while yes, this is progress, we hear you, America. We hear you. We know that you are demanding more and we are with you. And so while today we celebrate progress and we will march up those steps and get the bill out of the house and to the president's desk, tomorrow, today, we continue to march. We continue to fight. And my friends, in November, we vote. Remember who was with you. Remember who uplifted you. Remember who your partners are. We will be there for you every step of the way. It is now my privilege to turn the podium back to the incredible leader of our caucus that will never give up, Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Thank you very much. Thank you to my colleagues for their very important messages. I also want to join them in acknowledging the activist. As you've all heard me say again and again, our inside maneuvering can only accomplish so much. It's the outside mobilization that makes all the difference in the world. And much of that mobilization has been spontaneous and organic, not organized by us, but springing from the heartbreak of it all. I know that uh, I have a, a coin, a challenge coin, Stand with Parkland. Stand with Parkland. In standing with Parkland, we stand with all of you. With all of you. And again, we will not rest until the job is done. And now, without voice or training, we are now going to sing God Bless America. <laughs> God Bless America. Beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above, from the mountains to the prairies to the oceans, white with foam. God bless America, my home, sweet home. God
God has truly blessed America with this legislation today. Thank you all.